Hello, everybody. So apparently there is a CI officer who was killed in Somalia. Obviously, with that comes a lot of questions like why exactly was he there? What are we doing there? So on and so forth. I will answer that sources in the description box below. Before I even start, though, let's go ahead and let's look how the New York Times phrases this. So here's what they say. And I'm reading this. I'm showing you guys a visual in case you're listening. But the New York Times says, quote, the officer's combat death came as President Trump considers pulling back on American operations in the region. So what they're pretty much trying to say is President Trump wants to leave Somalia, so therefore we should stay because he's by default wrong. Wait, 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 hold on a sec. Wait, what are we doing there? I feel like most people probably don't know, unless they're politically engaged, probably like the people listening right now, like you probably know that they're there. What are we doing there? What are we doing there? Why was he killed? So apparently this guy was a former Navy SEAL and the military there is allegedly training and building operations in Somalia to improve their light, their elite light infantry force. I guess this guy was a part of the CIA's paramilitary division. So he was in a support role. Can people die from positions in support roles? Yeah, sure. But how did this individual die? What I'm alluding to is I'm, I'm kind of struggling to think that a CIA paramilitary force is being there solely to train troops. Now, why would I say that? Well, because they have operations in Africa already, not just training troops. They have actual programs there along with airstrikes, which we conveniently also do in Somalia. We also have a history of ground forces in Somalia. So how did this individual die? Now, apparently what the goal here was, was they were trying to combat Al-Shabaab. So Al-Shabaab, this is funny because this is actually my area of study, what I'm, I'm trying to continue on with my own education in is extremism, specifically this. So they're an Islamist extremist organization, and the U.S. wants to counter al-Shabaab because apparently that equals U.S. instability. First things first, there's a misconception that al-Shabaab is somehow like closely interconnected with al-Qaeda. However, there's not actually a lot of information correlating that. A lot of times what happens in the, the, with the U.S. government is they like to claim that al-Shabaab is a problem as a result of the fact that they have connections with extremists abroad, specifically in al-Qaeda. Is al-Shabaab a problem? Yeah. Do they have global aims? Not any more than the Taliban, and that's pretty close to zero. The history of al-Shabaab is that apparently... Some individuals at some point in time had connections with individuals in Al-Qaeda, apparently. I guess back in the 1990s during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, allegedly there's individuals from Al-Shabaab that had connected with people in Al-Qaeda and therefore that creates some sort of a link. Now, the question is, how? what, is, what does connected mean? Is connected mean like, oh, they, they, there's one person that happens to know somebody in Al-Qaeda? Or does that mean they work together? I would strongly suggest that we be critical of they, if they, being the government, says that they work together. Al-Shabaab was created in 2006 to combat Ethiopia's invasion. Most of these extremist organizations start as a result of some sort of evasive foreign occupation policies, or at least, excuse me, at least they expand as a result. So in this case, Ethiopia in 2006. In addition to that as well, 2011, Kenya also decided to create more invasion forces. So it's Ethiopia and Kenya in there, and that created Al-Shabaab. So with that said, what exactly is our role? Because we have airstrike campaigns there. Statistically, that hasn't helped. So if that doesn't help, and we have officers... CIA officers that are getting killed, that seems kind of like an act of war, in which case, don't we need to get that to be passed by Congress? Because last I checked, that's, that's how this goes. You're supposed to get that checked by Congress. Now, Trump wants to withdraw 600 individuals from Somalia, which in, in reality, what he's probably going to do is he's probably going to do what Obama did and Bush, which is you increase the number, decrease, increase the number, decrease. So you can always say that you are 
withdrawing. I also don't think those 600 people are probably withdrawing from Somalia. They're probably going to scatter into different regions and they'll probably be back. Also, I apologize if you hear music. There's like some sorority girls like playing music or something next to me, like in, a, in another apartment. So full circle, what should we do instead? Well, I don't know. Let's think about this. What is a greater priority than U.S. military operations in, uh, in Somalia? Well, let's think about this. Right now, there's 40,000 people that die from no health care. There could be up to a million or over a million people who are going to be dead from COVID. Maybe the greatest threat to national security would be health care. So maybe instead of increasing the military budget by $150 billion between Obama all the way to Trump, maybe we should reallocate those resources because maybe that's a bigger issue than Al-Shabaab. Another food for thought. What if we reallocate some of those materials or resources to creating, say, the Green New Deal? Now, I get it. Everybody's got an opinion on that. But check it out. The U.S. military deemed climate change to be the greatest existential threat to humanity right now. Can we say the same thing with Al-Shabaab? Probably not. So instead of focusing on these smaller organizations right now, Maybe we should focus on something that is a little bit bigger problem right now and in the long run. Because climate security is a real thing that's affecting us now, which is why we're in a lot of <laughs> we're in a lot of wars as a result. Look at how Syria, the issues with Syria, look how that started. One of the reasons was because they had the greatest drought as a result of climate change. Maybe we should focus on tackling things like that and maybe a little bit less time on smaller organizations. What do you think?